Good morning. Welcome back to the break. It's on uh, the 4th of February 2019. It's 15 minutes to 7 o'clock. My name is Sam Gituko and I'm just in time for news review. On my right is Dr. Chris Omalo from Kiminini. Welcome back to the show. It's been a long time. Thank you. Where have you been? I've been good. I was away. I just <coughs> came in. I was in Europe mm. uh, for some uh, official matters and some private matters. Officially I'm private. happy to be here today. Okay. All right. Um, Mwishmiwa Beatrice Elachi is back also. And um, Mwishmiwa Deputy Governor, former Deputy Governor of Nairobi, Jonathan Mweke Karibuni Sana. Thank Asante. you for making time for us. And this is the day that you said they are going to hand in their um, assignment. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope that you've prepared well for uh, setting the referendum, the referendum question. I wish your name was here. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was our. <laughs> did, did she chicken out? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, oh, She's a legal she expert. <laughs> She's a legal expert. All right, so we'll make an okay. attempt to uh, look into that. But first, let's take a look at uh, what's making headlines in the papers. On the front page of the Daily Nation, power farm caught in 14 billion shilling land scam. Detectives suspect officials at Ketrako colluded with landowners to inflate the value of land during construction of the Mombasa Nairobi power line. This is quite uh, reminiscent and, uh, of um, the situation that we had with the SGR. So 14 billion shillings has been spent. Uh, they are saying that uh, an amount of money that was paid to a landowner in Kajado of 35 million shillings for his 8.4 acres of land, which detectives say should have cost 4.5 million shillings. So talking about almost eight times of the actual value. Then um, you will see that on the front page of the standard car importers, new shocking trick in a new law for graft, the dead are now importing vehicles from their graves in a scheme involving businessmen and state officials only interested in enriching, enriching themselves without regard to lives of Kenyans uh, they put at risk. So there is uh, one lady here who died in 2014, but according to uh, government records, she imported some trucks in the year 2015 and 2016. I just don't yeah. know what we have become as a country. <laughs> and of course, uh, another big story that you'll see on the back page of uh, this, the Daily Nation, rather, is Nurses Union dismisses efforts by Labor Ministry to avert strike. Action by nurses will not affect Vihiga, Mombasa, Mandera, and a few other counties. What we have, what we know so far, is that at least 11 counties will be affected by this strike, and it is re in regards to uh, failure to remit the benefits that were agreed upon uh, when they last had a strike. And I want us to begin with the uh, part on. Uh, Let's begin with the nurses' uh, strike because now we see that at least 11 counties are going to proceed on um, a strike. It's not the very first time since 2013 that we're having these kind of <coughs> situations, but it appears that um, we never quite get it right at the counties to implement uh, what has been agreed upon between uh, the workers and the government. What should we do? You know, one of the things, uh, for me, I know even when I was in the Senate, I was among the minorities who said this is a function that needed to have been <coughs> retained at the national government because mm -hmm. it's services to the people. Th we are dealing with your hu human life. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when I look at, uh, for example, the security doc mm -hmm. and the health doc, they are the same. Because uh, it, when you look at you, safety, when we are talking of safety, mm -hmm. we are also talking of this health sector. And, and uh, for now, you, you, can, you hear there are, I don't know, five counties that, will be, that are OK. Mm -hmm. Meaning the governors have sat down with them, they've been able... So it is like you have to... You know, every county is negotiating its own bargain. Right. And, and, and I don't think it is fair even to, to, to now the health sector, the health practitioners. It's mm -hmm. not fair. Mm -hmm. Because then you come out and you ask yourself, then when it comes to their pensions, when the time will come, mm -hmm. and the governor left, mm -hmm. who will they be negotiating with at that time? Mm -hmm. Because uh, the next government might, might come in and decide you're not remitting what is supposed to be for their pension. So how do you follow up from year 2013 to year 2017 when, uh, for example, my deputy were in office, now we have uh, a new governor, the, he will leave office, the next governor. So for me, it is a sector because it deals with human life. Right. It, its purpose has to come back to the national government. Either we agree, as we go for a referendum, <coughs> One of the things we must create for them also is a health commission. Mm -hmm. Because just like the police commission, the teachers commission, they must have a commission where you, you have a, a, a place where you can 
discuss all these issues and then you see how to move mm -hmm. but it has the the human resource itself the personnel has to come back to the national government the counties can be left with the infrastructure of that health sector that that, that is my thinking well um, deputy governor you are the health at, at, at one point and um, i see that the strike is expected to affect uh, 22 counties inclu including uh, Nairobi, Kisumu, Homa Bay, Muranga, Kisi, Embu, Kiambu, Garissa, Elgeo, Marakwet, Kirinyaga, Marsabit, Nyandaro, and Nyeri counties, of course, so many others. But she says that we should revert back to the national government. But uh, literally, uh, the challenge that is affecting these counties is not because the function has been devolved. It's because people are, not just, are just not doing their job. How do you make them do their job so that they can, uh, they can implement the service and uniform allowances as agreed upon during the collective bargaining agreement? I know when, uh, when we were in office and the health workers were striking, the issue was the dis discoordination <coughs> or miscoordination between the national government mm -hmm. and the county government. So at that time, what the national government did in 2014, mm -hmm. with no regard to the Council of Governors or the counties, the national government went mm -hmm. with a PS then, I think he was called uh, Mr. Bohr or somebody, went and negotiated with the doctors and the nurses a collective bargaining agreement mm -hmm. without any consultation with the Council of Governors or with the counties. So that created a crisis. In around 2016, when the nurses and the doctors came to strike, and mm -hmm. remember the strike that, was, uh, that took quite a long time, it took almost three or four months, is because the county said, wait a minute, we didn't even know about this collective bargaining ag agreement. It was mm. discussed at the national level <coughs> behind the county's backs, so we don't even have those packs and the salary raises and the benefits and all of that in our budget. So if something is <coughs> not in our budget, it is illegal to implement it. Mm -hmm. And you saw that standoff was resolved in Naivasha at the devolution conference mm -hmm. when the president <coughs> And the governor sat down and decided how they were going to handle the doctors. Mm. So I think coordination should be done a little better between the national government and the county governments. And that's what resolved the strike then. That was with the doctors. Right. Uh, now with the nurses, I read again that their collective bargaining agreement has not been honored. Right. So we need to ask ourselves, how was this CBA negotiated? Because now that the counties have, 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 uh, the <coughs> have, have health is devolved to the counties, so they have the responsibility of health, then every county should then treat their nurses differently depending on their local situation. Right. And that is the beauty of devolution. Everything is localized. For example, I wouldn't see why a uh, nurse in, for example, Embu, should be paid the same amount as a nurse in Nairobi because the standard of living in those two counties is different. So there must be the local situation taken into account. What is the standard of living? Are there housing facilities? Are there uh, school facilities? Is it a hardship area where the nurses should be given a hardship allowance? Mm -hmm. And that can only be negotiated at the county level. I, so are you really convinced that it should be taken back to the national government? I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not convinced. Uh, I think if the systems worked the way they were supposed to work, mm -hmm. then would be fine. Mm -hmm. I know a big issue again with the nurses and the doctors is their salaries didn't come on time. Uh, now, at the national government, salaries always come on time. Mm -hmm. Counties, most of them, apart from maybe <coughs> Nairobi, Kiambu and Mombasa, counties, most of them depend on the money that comes from the national government. Now, we know that the national government has been delaying remitting uh, money to the counties for two or three months. Mm -hmm. How do you expect that county to pay their workers if it's not received the money depends on to pay those salaries? Mm -hmm. So I think if the systems work as shown and as envisioned in our constitution, then you won't have this crisis. So in summary, Sam, I think it's a coordination issue okay. between the national and the county governments. Mm -hmm. I think it's a funding issue. If the national governments funded the counties properly, we should be good to go. And I also think it's a localization issue. Every county should look at its local situations and treat its workers just like that. Mwishmua Omaloa, it's not the first time you're having county workers threatening to go on strike, but uh, more often than not, they have always gone on strike after threatening. <coughs> what has become of us that you're not able to resolve crises before it actually affects us? Because I see the conciliatory team that has been constituted by the Labour Ministry mm. has not <coughs> borne any fruits. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's very unfortunate what is happening to the nurses. Like uh, when you go to the rural villages, 
actually they are the nurses who are the primary health care providers. Mm -hmm. And it's very unfortunate if the CBA has been negotiated and yet when it comes to implementation, mm. you find that the county governments are dragging. They are not even committed. Right. That commitment is not there. To me, I do support the nurses, and of course it's their fundamental right. As outlined in the constitution, they have a right to pick it. Mm -hmm. But if something you agreed, a CBA <coughs> is something you agreed collectively. It was kind of public participation. And if you've agreed that you're supposed to provide A, B, C, D, why should the county government not provide? Mm -hmm. How comes we are talking of Makweni, we are talking of Machakos, they've already implemented. Why have these other counties, including my own county of Transoya, why mm -hmm. have they not done that? Mm -hmm. So we do support the, the, the nurses to go on strike because it's a fundamental right and they, they have to do it. And we call upon His Excellency the President. In his big four agenda, we have universal health care. And universal health care can only succeed if at all there's a proper coordination in terms of the counties. So the buck stops at him. This is the time if you look at his uh, uh, cabinet secretaries, call upon the, the relevant uh, uh, counties. Mm. Why have the governors of those respective uh, regions not followed to the letter? Because this is something which was uh, collective. Mm -hmm. It was a negotiated approach. It was agreed. And if I listen to my friend Panyako, who is, uh, I think, secretary of the Nurses Union, I've been seeing him crying, crying every now and then. I think this is the time there must be some seriousness so that these people should be able to be given. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Giving Caesar what belongs to him. But when you look at uh, the county expenditure that we have in this country, if you look at the reports that have been given by the control of budget, it will show you that um, counties set out to spend 60-something um, percent, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes maximum 70 percent on recurrent expenditure. Yes. And they promise themselves that they're going to spend 30 uh, percent on development. Yes. Take a case of uh, Embu County that in the year 20. 2017-18 spent 69, set out to spend 69.9 percent on recurrent, mm -hmm. but the effective rate after that it was more than 70 percent on recurrent expenditure, and so little was left for development expenditure. I'm just wondering, maybe and you have not paid the nurses, but you have done uh, yes. current expenditure. Y yes, I'm just wondering. Now the nurses are demanding for higher pay. If you grant it, then it means that you have less for development and more going towards recurrent expenditure, and not the revenues are not going up. Not really. When you talk of a CBA. A CBA is like an MOU. It's something that was negotiated. You mm -hmm. must have looked at those external factors. You've looked at the issues of the 70% recurrent, the 30%. Mm -hmm. All those issues were factored in. Mm -hmm. If at all, uh, let's say, they could not manage to pay, obviously, uh, it was a discussion issue. Mm -hmm. What I understand is the nurses, whatever they demanded was higher, and what the government was providing was lower. Mm -hmm. So it was negotiated they reached some level where they agreed <coughs> that they have the capacity and the capability to pay. The big problem we're having here is, uh, and you should ask yourself, why is it that other counties are managed? I looked at the report, I think it's today's paper, in terms of the, the collections, the mm -hmm. revenue collections of these counties. Mm -hmm. There are many county governments have relaxed. Mm -hmm. You look at the, how, how, how much they are collecting. Even the municipalities were collecting more. Mm -hmm. And this is where there's room for corruption. Mm -hmm. They are collecting more money, but they're not declaring this. Why is that money going? That's where the corruption is in the county. And as I strive to go to become a governor, I'm mm -hmm. seeing that's where the big problem is. Because the county government, my dad is relying on the money coming from the National Assembly. They also collect some revenue. Why is it all of a sudden mm -hmm. you are collecting 70% or 10%? Where's the other money going? When you go back to the municipalities, the county, counters, county councils, they were collecting money. They were running. But this time, it is actually a trend that is cutting across. There's something that's a conspiracy. Because as you try to get money from the national government, mm -hmm. there's also some money that you're collecting locally. Right. And this is where the governors are not giving full disclosure, and that's where the corruption is. In fact, at one time we attempted to bring a bill so that we, we call upon <coughs> KRA to be the one in charge of the collection of this, all, all these discuss. issues in all the counties. Because this is where the corruption is. When you go to those centers of revenue collection in some counties, when you look at those officers, the, mm -hmm. the kind of cars they are driving, mm. the type of houses, and you, you wonder where they're getting the and, money and, from. And, and you think they're stealing from... No, in fact, of wh course. Wh why should you have... That's where the problem is. ...a private company collecting for you revenue... Exactly. ...and you're paying them a percentage, then give it to care. Give it to care. They eh? will collect, declare Absolutely. that this county has this... We reduce from uh, what we are saying you're supposed to get from national government and we move. Do they have that I capacity? I mean, uh, Nairobi should not be getting any money from national government. None. 
If no. you collect your revenue right and you are doing everything, all you need is okay. a bargaining power mm -hmm. because Nairobi is huge and you need national government to support you. What you need is to come up with a clear memorandum and say, with Nairobi, you got national government, you must support us in security, you must support us in transport, you must support us in water, in all these services. But at the same time, we don't need you now. You must support us in roads, but don't give us this. Our re our collection revenue is enough to take care of these other things. If yeah, these other know, things are being okay, done, you know, before some. he comes in, because uh, he was an uh, implementer. <laughs> no, yeah, okay. it's true. I, I, I do agree to an extent, but you can't say Nairobi doesn't need the money because uh, no, it needs the money. Nairobi, but let the government the do those is, functions for you. Absolutely, because but the constitution is, is very clear that at least fifteen percent should go to every county. Mm. And Nairobi contributes uh, to the GDP of this country almost 60%. Yes, so, so we are getting get a road deal. The, the better is the national government to do those services. I don't know that that's services. the case. I've heard it enough times. No, I think it's Let the go national government it. do those functions because any governor of Nairobi, <coughs> we will me. be pushing him, telling him what to do, yet the roles are so huge and okay. you need billions to do it. All right, Mushmu Elachi, let's yeah. get back to the question here. And uh, he has been a governor, so he would know, a, a deputy mm. governor, rather, so he would know. Um, a case in point, Machakos County in the financial year 2017-18 spent 7.4 billion shillings. Out of this, 14% went to development. That is 1.02 billion. For salaries and operations, it was 86%. That's about um, 6.3, no. Yeah, 6.3 yeah. 6. billion shillings. When I asked the governor uh, the question why this was the case on the 14th of uh, January 2019, he told me that it's because of the salary hikes for nurses and doctors. That is why they're left with just 14% for development. And so the question I'm asking, mm. is it that these counties do not have resources to raise the salaries for these health workers and so many others that are working under them? Or is it, as they are saying, that people are stealing away the revenue that has been collected by these institutions? I think, again, uh, some of the counties were imposed on workers, and then you didn't have a commensurate uh, funding for them. For example, I'll tell you Nairobi County, which I'm familiar with. In 2013, yeah, uh, 2012, before devolution came in, mm -hmm. Nairobi County used to get about 13.5 billion shillings from the exchequer, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, Dr. Wamalwa said that the county councils or municipal councils, councils used to get money from themselves. They didn't. They used to get money from local authorities. Yeah. They used to collect revenue, yeah, yes. But they also used to get money from that's the local true. government, mm -hmm. yeah? So there was LATIV and LASDAF and all percentage. those things. But in Nairobi, in the case of Nairobi, it was more than we got at the onset of devolution. Mm -hmm. So for example, Nairobi used to get about 13.5 billion shillings from the local government. When we came in, uh, we got 9 billion that first year of 2013. Mm -hmm. So revenue has been reduced for, by 4 billion. Yeah. Then because of devolution, agriculture workers were devolved, the nurses were devolved, the doctors were devolved, uh, betting workers were devolved. So about 3,500 workers were devolved from the national government to the counties. Mm -hmm. So you've been brought for more workers and you've been given less, less money. Resources. It's a struggle. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I agree with Honorable Speaker here that Nairobi shouldn't, and the key word here is shouldn't, need money from the national government. But the national government here is the problem. You're talking about revenue collection. Mm -hmm. Revenue collection is through rates, is through parking, is through business licenses and so on and so forth. And outdoor advertising and so on and so forth. Mm. As we speak, the national government owes Nairobi County at least 72 billion shillings. That can fund the budget of Nairobi County for four years. Mm. Now, if you have a fellow government who's supposed to be cooperating with you, not paying their dues so that you can operate, how do you operate? You can't, yeah? Now, in terms of revenue collection, I support internal mechanisms for mm. counties collect their own revenue because that is the diversity of devolution. If you have devolution and you have counties, then you say agriculture should go back to the national government. Health should go back to the national government. Revenue collection should go to KRA national government. Then you're not devolving anything. Mm -hmm. The key thing about devolution was so that we can have these unique counties and unique talents uh, come out themselves and serve the people. But the feeling I'll is that uh, these institutions are uh, inefficient and that is why there is a lot of loss of it revenue. Depends. It depends on the leader. For example, we hired, as a, when, 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 when gov, uh, in the county government, mm -hmm. we decided to automate. Yeah? Mm -hmm. 
the former city council had tried to automate. In mm -hmm. four years, they didn't succeed. Mm -hmm. We decided to automate. We got in a professional company to come in. Mm -hmm. By the time we were leaving, we had doubled the amount of revenue collected from mm -hmm. 7 billion shillings in 2013. By the time we were leaving, we were collecting 14 billion shillings in 2018. Now, 2019 with the new governor, it's come down to 10 billion shillings. What's the county of What's the county assembly mm -hmm. doing? What's the senator of Nairobi doing to say, wait a minute, in the last year you collected 14 billion, now you're collecting 10 billion, there's a drop of 30%, where is that money going? So institutions really must work and people must be held accountable. So you just can't blanketly say that counties are inefficient, governors are inefficient. No, there's mm -hmm. very successful counties. Mm -hmm. So here it really depends on leadership. And this is what Wananchi needs to look at. Wananchi needs to look and see how come Makweni can pay nurses and Nairobi cannot. Mm -hmm. Therein lies the problem. They are both counties. They are both funded by the government. The problem must be the leader. Mm. All right. Now, now, I just want to say something on uh, what Honorable, the former Deputy Governor had mentioned. He's mm -hmm. talked about 72 billion being owned by, being owed by the national government. Mm -hmm. We're talking about other counties. The counties of Transoya, the counties of West Pokot, I don't think the government is owing them to that magnitude. We understand about Nairobi. What about mm -hmm. these other counties? The government is owing them whatever money. We need to be told. Mm -hmm. Because I want us to demystify this narrative that the national government does not pay or delays to pay. But when you look at the books in the long run, even if the government delays to take the money to the, to the counties, in the long run, the money is paid. Mm -hmm. When you look at the pending bills, in the county government. It's crazily high. Mm. Why is it these pending bills, you are not catering for them? And yet, after the Division of Revenue Bill has been passed in Parliament, they've done the county appropriation bill at the Senate, this money goes to the counties, even if they delay. Mm -hmm. Why is it that these counties have not reduced the pending bills? That's where the question is. Mm -hmm. Where is the money going? That's where the problem is. When you talk about the revenue, these counties also collect revenue. Mm -hmm. Why is it all of a sudden, across the counties, the collection is around only 80%. Mm -hmm. And when you project an estimate, you come up with a target. This target is not a figure you're getting it from, from the moon. It is a negotiated figure. You've looked at the trend analysis, the way you've been collecting the revenue in that particular county. You've looked at the external factors which affect the, the revenue collection. The them. risks, all this. Yeah. And you agree that this financial year, I think, for McQueen or Transoya, will be able to collect, let's say, five billion. Yeah. Okay. You've looked at that, but how comes when it comes to implementation, the problem is within the system. And when we say partner with KRA, does not mean you are negating uh, issues of devolution. You are just having an MOU because they have the capacity to be to be helped in terms of efficiency improvement, so that you can collect more revenue to be able to be sustainable. M M and why? also declare that Absolutely. revenue. Because and in declare this other system, revenue. I mean, they we, don't yeah. declare. We, yes. we, we, respect, we do respect that opinion, but the problem I have with it is, you're here, you're faced with a problem, and I do agree, there is corruption in the counties, and there's systems and inefficiencies that don't work in the counties. But when you have that kind of a problem, you don't bury your head, your head in the sand. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Saying that you're now going to KRA is running away from the problem. The problem is the governor. Why can't you impeach the governor? Why isn't the public accounts committee, public investment community so, at the counties working? The problem is we don't have consequences to all these problems. So what we do is we run away from them and start looking for somebody else to so come and do somebody else's job. So DG. The constitution is very clear, hold on Sam, mm -hmm. that the governor is responsible for the financial propriety of the county. Why do you want to take that responsibility away from the governor? Yet, one, he's been elected, two, he's been paid to work, now you want to take away his work and give it to the KRA guy to do his work for him. I disagree with that. Let the but governor do also, his job. So let, and let, if he let doesn't do you. it, let him be impeached. Let's, uh, so let's get to understand oh, the, pro the problem There's here. There's female governors now. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, just, just a moment, Mishmur. Yes. Let's understand the problem here. You're saying that the problem is the governor. So is it mental capacity? Um, is it theft? What is the problem with these governors? Because even if you impeach and you haven't resolved the situation in the yeah. institutions mm. and bring a new person, you still have the same, the problem. same problem. I think it's leadership. And leadership is very fundamental for any organization, be it in the public sector or the private sector. That's why you have one leader today who makes a country great and you put in another leader tomorrow, comes with their own leadership methods and all that is wiped away and the country becomes poor. Mm -hmm. The issue here is leadership. Are we electing good leaders? So in all these 21 countries that haven't implemented their uh, CBAs, 
their governance. They to wrongly no, no, no. no. You, you have to look at. You see, the, 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 the beauty <laughs> about devolution is all counties are unique. So you have to look at all these counties uniquely mm -hmm. and pick one county and say, okay, fine. What have been their priorities? Mm -hmm. What has what is their revenue collection? Uh, what is their expenditure like? Are they spending in the right things? What is the governor doing with the money? Or what is the governor choosing to do with the government with the money? Because all these are the choices of the yet, governor. Yet we have county assemblies yeah. that are supposed to be so making sure this is monitored. The key thing mm. here is the county assemblies and the Senate. Remember, the Senate okay. is supposed to be protecting the counties. Mm -hmm. So if these institutions work, okay. then you know, we'll, 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 we'll be somewhere. Okay. But right, for so me, I, I just want to say, we mm -hmm. cannot say it is, uh, it is the way we are complaining in this corruption things. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say it is the governor, then you, you're trying to tell me that the governor has to now go on the ground and collect revenue? We have officers collecting that revenue. Fine, it can be leadership. Mm -hmm. But for me, why I'm saying that, let us look for an institution that declares, so that when you're coming and you're saying uh, the national government has not uh, given us our remitted uh, resources that we need, mm -hmm. you here are telling us, but in that, in our kitty, we have collected certain amounts and we have used these amounts to do one two three it will be if kenyans will now start understanding where the problem is but for now even if you ask kenyans they are wondering all the local revenues were were retained in the counties so that counties can be able to mm. sustain themselves as you await for this money as chris says but even I if the money delays it is still your money so don't mm. tell me every month you must be looking at the national government so it means there's nothing you're doing here all you're waiting is national government what about if national government says this month because of the risks and the crisis we are facing as a country mm. we are, we are which it has happened we are now reducing this so how are the counties uh, sitting down and relooking at their budgets to say okay. we have a national crisis, mm -hmm. we don't have resources, and therefore this year we must relook at and look at our priorities, cut down. That does not mean now you come to the nurses mm. and say they are the ones who are going to suffer more, while now your team here mm -hmm. is getting salaries. No. Okay. And, and the last thing I want to say about this, mm -hmm. so that we know, because we wanted to also achieve uh, what can we take to a referendum. Give yourself, uh, uh, yourself an example. I'm a woman, a nurse, working in Malindi. From, and my husband is in Kakamega. So for me to ask for transfer, I have to negotiate with a nurse in Kakamega. Where does uh, such a law came from? Where? Mm. <laughs> but I have to negotiate to, with a nurse in Kakamega for me to get a transfer mm -hmm. to now go to Kakamega to my family. I think this, no. We must rethink as a country. We must say we have looked for, 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 for seven, going to eight years now, and we realize this issue of health was better at the national government, especially the human structure. Mm -hmm. Go back to the national government. If it is a transfer, a nurse is like a teacher. You can work anywhere. Hippie. It's like a policeman. You can work okay. anywhere. All right, Mushmu Elaji, and I want us to close But on, if you uh, localize uh, it, the, then on, it on looks this bad. conversation, yes. and as you respond, yes. I just want to get clarity. I thought that when mm. you collect revenue, you should uh, deposit it with the National Treasury first before utilizing it? Yes. Does, does that always it's happen? True. It does not always happen. And, and so my point here, and I keep saying every time I'm on your show, it's about institutions. Mm -hmm. The budget making process is very clear, OK? Uh, there's a revenue side, there's an expenditure side. Revenue side is done on what you call uh, bench, uh, you benchmark. So mm -hmm. you say, how many businesses are there in Nairobi? Mm -hmm. A business license collects this much. So a revenue budget should be mm -hmm. 10 billion shillings from uh, business, business licenses, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. The numbers are there, they don't lie. So why I'm saying the buck stops with the governor is when the revenue collectors or his officers and the CCs don't bring in that kind of revenue, the governor should be asking those questions and say, wait a minute, we're supposed to expect two billion, why didn't two billion come, only half a billion came? Mm. The same is with expenditure. With expenditure, the process is very clear. We actually go to the Mwananchi at the world level and say, what do you want to be done in terms of development in your world. The Mwananchi says, I want this road, I want this street light, I want okay. this hospital, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. But then those things are never done. So one, why doesn't the county assembly question? Two, why doesn't the, center, the, 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 the Senate question, Senator question? Mm -hmm. And number three, which is most important, mm -hmm. why does the Mwananchi elect that governor again? 
while for four years you told us you're going to build this hospital, we approved it in your budget, you're given money by the national government, the hospital has still not been built, and the governor gets re-elected. We mm. have a problem. Yes, that's why they didn't re-elect you. Well, that, yeah. is, maybe, <laughs> that is probably why we didn't get maybe, re yeah. But that's but a now, perfect example. You can't continue rewarding people <laughs> who are not performing. That's the problem we have in this country. Okay. Now, on, the, on the cry of nurses, uh, I listened to Honorable Lachi, and I think there was an effort to have the health commission so that mm. it works like the TSC. Mm -hmm. Maybe at a later stage, and yeah. we are moving towards uh, the constitutional reforms, mm -hmm. maybe it's the highest time we should look into that. Okay. But as somebody who believes in devolution, to me, I strongly feel it is an issue of uh, look, putting structures and systems in place. You know these nurses are demotivated. And mm -hmm. there's a theory, Victor Vroom theory, a theory of expectancy. Mm -hmm. You know when you are working and the working conditions are good, mm -hmm. you get motivated and you put in more. Yeah. These nurses, mm -hmm. they are over on the street, they're ever crying, they're never motivated. Mm -hmm. They are handling the patients. What we are calling upon is this. We want our governors to improve the working conditions of our healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. For example, in Transoya, it is pathetic. I've had so much, but now it is the responsibility of the governor, the back stops at him. Mm -hmm. Maybe when our time comes, they mm -hmm. look at it and see what value are we adding. Mm -hmm. But what I want to say about the nurses, give to CISA what belongs what to CISA. <laughs> nurses have cried for too long. They are the ones who take care of the healthcare in our institutions, in our rural areas, whatever it is. We are calling upon those county governments to borrow a leaf. Okay. What has Makweni done at Machakos that we cannot be able to do?